Good evening. You're watching News at Night for Monday, February the 22nd. I'm Colette Linden. I'm Craig Huckerby. We have a little more snow tonight, but hey, we've got some toasty temperatures to tell you about too. Ontario reported another 1,058 cases of COVID-19 on Monday as one long-standing hotspot for the illness moves back into the province's color-coded system of restrictions. York formally moved into the red controls level of Ontario's reopening framework this morning, meaning its stay-at-home order has been lifted. Locally in the Algoma region, we have seven active cases with two patients currently in the hospital. Northern Credit Union responded to Sue Online over the weekend to comment on the closure of the Richards Landing Branch. 1,200 customers are serviced at the Richards Landing Branch of the Northern Credit Union. Islanders will have to travel at least 45 minutes to access a bank. The Northern Credit Union is consolidating three cust these customers to Thessalon and Sault Ste. Marie. Northern Credit Union plans to have a priority seniors telephone line to help with the transition of consolidating branches. This will be staffed with local Northern employees and available for 24-hour service. Northern Credit Union will also also be releasing a digital video series aimed at assisting people with the transition and staff will be available at the branch for in-person sessions on digital banking up until the closure on June the 1st. This branch also employs four local islanders and it is unclear what the effect the cons consolidation will have on the employees. Health officials on the James Bay Coast are reporting 10 cases of COVID-19 in the community of Moosonee after several were reported over the weekend. The Porcupine Health Unit's Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Leanne Catton, is also warning of the potential risk of exposure to the virus at Gigi's Ace Hardware Store in Moosonee. Anyone who was in that store between February the 11th and the 19th is to self-monitor for symptoms for up to 14 days from the last day they visited. An infected person can spread COVID-19 starting 48 hours or two days before the person had any symptoms or tested positive for COVID-19. On February the 19th, officers with Investigation Services charged 40-year-old Wayne Montgomery for theft over $5,000. On January the 7th, police received information alleging between October the 28th and January the 5th that the accused stole approximately $25,861 from equipment he was hired to maintain. An investigation began and the accused was located on February the 19th and arrested. He is charged with theft, theft over $5,000 and scheduled to appear in court on March the 29th. Canada has once again placed among the top countries in the world as measured by the Global Peace Index. The Institute for Economics and Peace placed Canada 6 out of 163 countries on its 15th edition of the GPI. Canada placed 6 in the world in 2019 as well. Ranking high in the GPI is indicative of Canada's continued role as a leader on the world stage. The GPI provides insight into Canada's strong record on environmental, social and governance investor criteria, demonstrating that peace and sustainable development are inextricably linked. Global peacefulness has deteriorated over the past year, with this being the fourth time in the last five years that the world has seen a fall in peacefulness. Iceland remains the most peaceful country in the world, a position it has held since 2008. It is joined at the top by New Zealand, Austria, Portugal, and Denmark. The United States, ran States ranks 121st out of the 163 countries indexed. Boeing has recommended that airlines ground all of its 777s with the type of engine that suffered a catastrophic failure over Denver on the weekend. A United Airlines plane's bright engine blew apart just after takeoff. Pieces of the casing of the engine, a Pratt & Whitney PW4000, rained down on suburban neighborhoods. The plane made an emergency landing at Denver International Airport. None of the 231 passengers or 10 crew on board was reported hurt. U.S. regulators have ordered United Airlines to step up inspections of Boeing 777 aircraft and United is temporarily removing the aircraft from service. Hi again everyone. Well, we went from a hard freeze last week to soft mush this week. We have some very warm temperatures to tell you about, but there comes a price with that. I'll let you know what that is right after this. There's something in this picture you're not seeing. It's called radon, and it's a naturally occurring gas. You can't see it, taste it, or smell it, but it's the leading cause of lung cancer after smoking. Radon can leak into your home undetected through cracks or gaps in the ground floor. Make sure you're safe from the risk of radon exposure. With a simple test, radon leaks can be detected. Visit lung.ca to learn more about how to protect your home from radon gas. Back everyone, well let's take a look at what we are in store for tonight and you know what, our temperature is not all that bad. What our temperatures are right now is going to be our overnight temperature of plus one. We're going to be
be mainly with uh, cloudy conditions for the evening. We're going to see the clouds thicken up though and start producing some uh, snow showers later on tonight and we could see two to four by tomorrow morning and they could linger into the morning. We'll take a look now at the overnight lows if you want to call these lows. Look at this, minus two in Thunder Bay, minus, or zero in uh, Wawa, minus two in Timmins, all well above where we should be at this time of year. No complaints there. We'll take a look at the uh, satellite shot and show you exactly what's going on. So we have this uh, system coming in for later on tonight. This is a warm front, which is why our temperatures are staying warm overnight tonight, and they're going to stay warm for our day as well tomorrow. And then we have a couple of other weak low systems coming in every 12 to 24 hours where we're going to see additional snow, and that's the, the price we pay for the warmer temperatures this week. Uh, but it's going to be mushy. It's going to be very mushy on the roads. Uh, nothing like last week and the week before that. We'll take a look at the systems map just to show you as we paint it here on the map. So we're going to see some flurry activity, something just like two to four centimeters from this warm front as that pushes through. And then if we advance uh, to our day on Tuesday, this is uh, what we look like. That warm front still drapes right over top of us. Again, those flurries could linger into the morning. And again, we're not looking at anything substantial at this point. And then we have this little system working in for Tuesday night into Wednesday where we're going to see more snow. And then we have a little break and then we see more snow on Friday. So that's our, uh, the way that the week is shaping up. We'll take a look at the three-day forecast for our day tomorrow. Again, temperature still very warm at plus two. Uh, we will see that snow linger in the morning, but it should die off in the afternoon. For Wednesday, we see those showers back again. With, uh, again, we could see another two to four centimeters from the system. Temperatures holding steady at zero degrees, not dropping all that far actually for overnight lows at minus nine. Minus three for Thursday, that's our break. We don't see any snow for then. But then uh, on Friday, we start seeing a system work in late Friday into Saturday, where again, we could see another two to four, maybe in five centimeters. But temperatures, look, we're looking pretty good for temperature-wise, so nothing can bad there. Uh, we should be around minus five for our daytime high, so we're pretty good for the last week of February. That's your weather for right now. Jacob Morris standing by with all your sports. Sault Ste. Marie locations. You do life, we do taxes. Welcome back to your evening news. I'm Jacob Sports. Tonight, I want to start off with talking about our Terry Panarin. Panarin is going to have to take a leave of absence for the, from the New York Rangers due to some allegations that have been made towards him back in Russia. So someone is accusing him of assaulting an 18-year-old girl back in 2011 at a Russian bar. The New York Rangers and Terry Panarin are both saying that these are allegations that have been fabricated due to his recent talks about Vladimir Putin. Because of this, Panarin is going to be taking a leave of absence and the Rangers have put out this statement. A term is obviously shaken up and concerned and will take some time away from the team. The Rangers fully support Panarin and will work with him to identify the source of these unfounded allegations. So we'll keep you updated on that story as we find more and more about it. Back into more NHL. The Montreal Canadiens have now lost two straight and have moved to fourth in the division. A lot of this has to do with Montreal having last week off, but still this is a big shakeup in the Northern Division. For Montreal, they're really looking to win their next game as they lost to Toronto and then they lost to the Senators in overtime. This is something that's really shaken the Northern Division and we'll have to see where the other teams land. To continue on that, the Edmonton Oilers have taken that, gone on a three-game winning streak, and now they're second in the division. 
This is big for Edmonton as a team that not that long ago people were, weren't even sure if they were going to make the playoffs. Now they're creeping up against Toronto to try to take first in the division. The Toronto Maple Leafs are running into some problems. The Maple Leafs now have Jake Muzzin injured, Zach Hyman injured, Joe Thornton injured, and Jack Campbell is still unsure when he'll be able to get back to playing time. Jake Muzzin is going to be out for most likely the longest. A stick hit him in the face off a shot and he broke a bone in his face. Zach Hyman and Jumbo Joe are both listed day to day. Hyman, we're pretty sure it has to do with that block shot to his foot that he was out with injuries before. And Joe Thornton is unknown on the injury. But again, I will keep you updated on what's going on with Joe Thornton. But now with the Leafs, they're still looking to keep rolling against the Flames. I mean, for the Leafs to win this game, they need Matthews and Marner to be rolling. The reason why I'm saying this is with no Hyman, that second line is a bit more empty and they're losing some secondary scoring. And with Joe Thornton out, that top line is now missing a big piece. With this, that also means their secondary scoring needs to step up. And I'm specifically going to call out John Tavares and William Nylander. These are two players that should be putting up a lot more points five on five and they're not. So I'm looking for them to have a breakout game tonight. The Leafs defense also really needs to step up. Jake Muzzin is their best defensive defenseman. And with Jake Muzzin injured, we're going to see Travis Dermott playing with Justin Hall on the shutdown pair. This is a big opportunity for Travis Dermott to get in and get some good playing time. So we'll have to see how Dermott does in that spot. But I think the entire defense core is going to have to step up because Muzzin takes up big minutes, blocks a lot of shots, and he's their most physical defenseman. I'd also say because of the defense injured, they're going to need strong goaltending between them missing three forwards and a defenseman. Either Anderson or Hutchinson, whoever starts tonight, is going to have to be sharp. More than likely it's looking like Anderson, but we haven't had confirmation yet on who's starting tonight for the Leafs. Moving off the NHL, let's slide over to the NBA. The Raptors are finally over 500. This is big news for the Toronto Raptors as they've been struggling this season to really find their groove. Funny enough, Kyle Lowry missed his third straight game with a broken thumb. But funny enough, the Raptors have won 16 games straight when Kyle Lowry has not been playing. Now, I'm not saying that means, oh, let's trade Kyle Lowry, but that's just a little interesting stat. The Raptors went up against the 76ers, who was a much bigger team than Toronto, and we figured we'd see the same problems again with the rebounding. Mind you, they were out-rebounded, but the Raptors players really did step up. With Chris Boucher getting 17 points, Pascal Siakam with 23 points, and Fred Van Vliet also with 23 points. What's big for me to see with that is, again, when Kyle Lowry is out, other players are stepping up. So this does form the question, are the Toronto Raptors the real deal? I would say they are the real deal. I think they are fifth in the division now. They're looking to improve. They are over 500. I don't see this team blowing up anytime soon, but I'll have more about that on Friday with 705 Sports. But for now, we got to get back over to Colette with news. So we'll be right back right after this break. Loss is something that never leaves you. Donate $45 today to help victims of impaired driving. A message from Mad Canada. The Canadian Council of the Blind has been improving the lives of those with vision loss for over 70 years. With more than 65 chapters across Canada, it is the largest membership-based organization of the blind. People of all ages dealing with vision loss can join and participate in sports and recreation activities, technology training and assistance, peer support groups and advocacy programs. For more information, visit ccbnational.net or call 1-877-304-0968. As reports came in that the Plaid Pig grocery store was on fire and that traffic was getting through very slowly. A call from a source in the area confirmed that the building was in flames from the old building that present owners and family all lived above this grocery store. The family and grandfather are all safe, however reports are unclear if all of the family's four children, three boys and one girl, were inside at the time of the fire. The fire which started around 3 o'clock yesterday was still burning at 7 p.m. Thankfully all residents of the apartment are all accounted for and safe. The grocery store's most recent owners, Justin and Courtney Verhey, said they have tragically lost everything in the fire. A GoFundMe page has just been started and we will continue to follow the story and release details as they become available. 
On Friday, a multi-vehicle collision at McNabb and Great Northern Road had the intersection blocked off for quite some time. Sioux Police Service, Sioux Fire and Ambulance were all dispatched to the collision that occurred around 5 p.m. There was no word on injuries, however, fire crews were called to help extricate one individual from a vehicle. A weekend search for a missing snowmobiler ended in the best possible way. According to sources close to Matt Evans, he lost his way and ran out of fuel en route to his destination. An angler was able to help Matt out of the back country, at which time he was able to send off a text to advise those close to him that he was well and safe. Sioux St. Marie Search and Rescue, OPP, Sioux Trailblazers and others were out looking for 31-year-old Matt Evans on Friday when he was last seen leaving on a snowmobile from Searchmont Highway. On February the 20th, officers with patrol services charged 64-year-old Paul K. with impaired driving due to alcohol and drugs. At 9.12 p.m., officers observed a vehicle driving erratically in the area of Pym Street. A traffic stop was conducted and officers approached the vehicle where the accused was in the driver's seat. Upon speaking with the accused, officer developed grounds to believe his ability to operate a motor vehicle was impaired by drugs. The accused was given a standardized field sobriety test and he performed poorly. He was arrested and later given a drug recognition evaluation, which he performed poorly as well. He is charged with impaired driving, alcohol and drugs and scheduled to appear in court on March the 29th. Sioux Online received an update from the Sioux Fire Services regarding the fire that took place on Saturday, February this evening, the 20th, a fire broke the out in the 200 block of Carrefour. Well, the good news is we're about a month away from spring. Mm -hmm. How is the weather looking for the next couple of weeks? Well, I mean, we, we do uh, start March next week and we have some toasty temperatures uh, for the first couple of weeks in March. But we do have some snow to deal with this week and we have, um, you know, uh, every second day we're going to see a snow shower here. We could end up with 10 centimeters or so. so. Okay, well look, here's looking forward to those toasty temperatures. Thank you for joining Craig and I on News at Night for Monday, February the 22nd. Stay tuned for more news and weather.